So um, you mentioned about biking going from 25 to 30 miles an hour. Uh, you know, when I look at, at the top speeds of the podium finishers and various, you know, wh whether it's an Olympic or an Ironman, you, could, you see a lot of people in the 20 to 22 mile per hour range, um, fewer people 22 to 24 mile per hour, and 24 mile an hour faster is a, a fairly fast cyclist. Right. Is there a, a reason for that limit? Yeah, I think it's just how, and it would depend on the distance, it's just, you know, what, what their maximum action consumption is and how aerodynamic they can get. Okay. And, and Suzanne, you see this also um, in cycling, you, you don't necessarily pay a price for being a little bit bigger if you're flat on the flat. There are some very good large time trialists, pr provided they can remain aerodynamic, but where people like Fabian Cancellara really suffer is when you make them go uphill. Yeah. <laughs> so if it's important in biking, how much more important is it in swimming? Because the density of water is is significantly greater than the density of air, right? Nine hundred. Yeah, yes, but you're going a lot faster, so you get into. I think it's a. You know, we don't need to get into the math, but I think it's a cubic <laughs> function. Uh -huh. So it's a function that's either to the third or the fourth power. Wow. So these, so, these small okay. increases in speed really take a lot of additional action consumption, and some of the proof is in in the pudding. If you think about it. People, uh, world class 1500 meter swimmers, go about one minute per hundred, or maybe 59 seconds per hundred, or even 58 seconds per hundred, the world record holder. Mm -hmm. Whereas, as, as with the increased effort associated with a 100 meter sprint, they go 48 seconds. Mm. So, mm -hmm. similar speeds around 61, 62 seconds a lap for a 5,000 meter as a world class runner, like the people Bobby sees up in, in, in Boulder. But yet people can run 400 meters in 43 seconds. Uh huh. So the so, energetics are the same, but they're getting you know almost two x as much speed out of it. Right. Yeah. Right. What's also interesting, um, you know, that one, once you throw the bike and the run into it, that uh, a lot of the top coaches will tell you that in, in cycling alone, aero absolutely trumps everything else. But in triathlon, you know, I recently did a an article for Triathlon Magazine where, where we looked at the non-aero position of, of a Mark Allen and a Dave Scott on the bikes that they rode in those days and consequently were able to run uh, faster than they're actually running today. So, you know, it, it, it's a, a practical demonstration of, of, of what you guys are speaking uh, about. And the, the trade-offs, Bobby, because those guys were running around 240, weren't they? Exactly, yeah. So the so trade-off now is, you know, uh, considerably faster on the bike but giving back three or four minutes on the run uh, and also you guys can't steal all the thunder with the bike and the run I mean the bike and the <laughs> swim because there is a point in the run where where uh, density of air starts to count and it's uh, for probably half of our listening community it happens at about 448 pace where wind resistance starts to become an issue yeah so <laughs> so 11 or 12 about 12 miles an hour 12 a little over 12 miles an hour <laughs> exactly, I better slow yeah. down <laughs> yeah, so you know, you you guys that run faster than that, you've got you've got other problems. Yeah. So <laughs> you've got other opportunities. <laughs>